Dublin International Film Festival. And it's my great pleasure to welcome Kevin Spacey on stage to talk about not just this film, but his many, many films. And also uh, to welcome Mark Dinning, the editor of Empire, who's going to host the Q&A. So with that, enjoy. Thank you, Kevin. I knew there was a part they'd written for me, but so I read it, and 
it was really fucking confusing. Uh, and so I read it again, and it was really fucking confusing. And uh, then I read it a third time, and sort of the nickel dropped. And but I actually thought that there were. I thought Keaton was a really good part. I thought there were a couple of parts that were really good, but there was this character of Verbal that just sort of struck me as not like anything I'd ever done before and, and was a really interesting character. So I called Brian and I said, I, I really liked this character Verbal, and they were of course secretly going, that was the part. And um, so we began to put it together. It was a very difficult film to fund. Um, there were no other actors in the movie at that point, so I cornered Gabriel Byrne at a party one night and told him he had to read the script. Um, I had just done a film called Swimming with Sharks, which was a very small independent film in which a young actor named Benicio del Toro had played an outgoing assistant in this film where I played a studio executive. And Brian was having a really tough time casting that role because if you look at the role of Fenster on the page, it really wasn't that interesting. I mean, he kind of knew what he did. He was just kind of a guy. And I said to Brian, I, I think you should see this actor I just worked with. And so I set up an appointment and I'll never forget, Brian called me after this audition and said, look, I've had everything to do with developing the script and Chris was in the room and he wrote it and neither of us had any fucking idea what he was saying. <laughs> but it was incredible. But I don't know what language he was speaking. And so ultimately, uh, he, he was put on board. Kevin Pollack came in, Steve Baldwin came in, and the cast sort of rounded out uh, from there. And um, it was uh, a very fast shoot. It was only 26 days, I think, that we shot the film. Um, all over Los Angeles and lots of different locations. That's always the funny thing about seeing a movie again after you haven't seen it for a long time is I'm just thinking about the locations. Oh yeah, that was the place they made a restaurant out of, but upstairs we were shooting all the police scenes. You know, I just remember all the various places we were at. Because um, you, you guys have got an amazing chemistry. I, I had no idea it was just 26 days you shot that movie. How was it, the five of you guys working together? Well, <laughs> I'll tell you a story about the lineup scene. Remember the lineup in the early part of the movie? Um, there was a real problem that happened in that scene, and, and it, it really upset Brian Singer. And that was that when we all got together, it was like the first scene we all shot together. Every time Benicio opened his mouth, we would start to giggle. You know what I mean? We would really start to giggle. Gabriel was like this most of the time. I was like this. Baldwin was just laughing out loud. Pollock thought it was hysterical. And Benicio was like, whoa, what about? What about? <laughs> it got to the point where we could not do a take without laughing. And at lunch, Brian called us into his trailer and he screamed at us. He was so upset. You're fucking ruining my movie, you fucking assholes, you fucking sons of bitches. He's literally all over us. We're like, we're sorry, boy, we're sorry. We'll pull it together after lunch, I promise we'll, we'll absolutely be serious. And we came back after lunch. <laughs> it was worse. <laughs> we could not keep a straight face. I don't think he got a single take out of that entire scene where someone wasn't choking with laughter. And if you watch that scene, we are giggling in that scene, but it wasn't in the script. <laughs> and yet, that always tells you what can sometimes be incredible about film, is that Brian ultimately decided in editing, he's like, fuck it, I can't fucking fight them, I might as well join them. So he put it in the film, and oddly it ended up being something that gave us, as a group, a kind of camaraderie that we might not have had if that hadn't happened. So as Brian thanked you for ultimately, is he still found yeah, ultimately? I, I was curious, I mean obviously it's an absolute modern classic. Which uh, came out in Cannes, was fantastically well received, was universally adored on release, with the exception of uh, one Roger Ebert from the Chicago Sun Times. He hated it? We gave it, no, we gave it one and a half stars. Um, <laughs> and he then put it on his most hated films list. Which I think everyone in this room can agree is pretty much an act of madness. Uh, 
what would you say to Roger about that, about that decision? I, I would say that I think it's really important that we admit our mistakes in life and that we <laughs> accept that we might have been wrong. You've been, uh, Kevin, a, a fantastic bad guy in a number of movies. Um, you know, Seven, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, some of the sharks you mentioned, and obviously the usual suspects. I just wondered, have you ever considered being a Bond villain? Obviously Sam Mendes is directing the new Bond movie. Is there anything you want to tell us? Any great... Look, I, I, I would love to be a Bond villain. Um, the, the problem with this film that Sam Mendes is about to do, he's going to direct the next James Bond, is that Sam, before he does James Bond, is starting rehearsals with me in May, because I'm going to be playing Richard III uh, at the Old Vic and around the world in a world tour that we're doing from September until December, and then we're taking it to Brooklyn, New York in January 2012. So because this production of Richard III is going to actually mean I'm committed to it for 10 months, he starts shooting Bond in September. So I think it's Ray Fiennes. With the to Mendes, that's why obviously you guys work together on the massive hype on your career in American Beauty. And again, you won another Oscar for that movie. How do you look back on that movie now? Um, I wanted very much to... When I found out that Sam Mendes was directing a film, I was very curious about what that film was, because I had known Sam's work. For those of you who may not know, Sam was the artistic director of the Dunbar Theatre in London for a decade. And... I know he turned down a couple of other movies, so when I heard he was going to direct this film, I was very curious about it. Um, I remember reading it in a house I was renting in London when I was doing a play there called The Iceman Cometh. I was completely blown away by it. E even though at the time there was an agent of mine who was trying to convince me that I should have considered doing the movie because it was really about a pedophile. <laughs> So I, don't get that. I don't get that part because he doesn't actually go through with it. Um, and it was, uh, I think, because it was Sam's first movie, because he's the man of the theater, because I'm a bit of a theater rat, I think what Sam did in that film that was so A, unique for films was that he took the best of theater and he applied it. So it's the only movie that I've ever done where we rehearsed it like a play for two weeks before we started shooting. And, and I mean two weeks with the entire cast. Um, and they set out, you know, tape on floors of the places we'd be shooting in. Um, and, and it was just one of those incredible experiences where you work with somebody whose vision of what the film could be, whose knowledge of um, how to do production design. His, his plays were always incredibly stunning. Um, his work with Conrad Hall, one of the great cinematographers ever, was a great relationship to watch. His ability with actors and his, uh, his knowledge and his, um, the task of being able to tell not just actors what he wanted, but every single member of every single department. So that everyone came to the set every day knowing what Sam was looking for and wanting to do their best work because he was such a joy to be around. Um, although my favorite uh, story about him, American Beauty is that we shot on the very first day uh, the scenes in Smiley's um, fast food place where my character Lester was working. And, you know, the next day you would see dailies of the previous day's work. So I think on two days later I said to Sam, So how, how are dailies on the first day? I was very curious how dailies were. And he said they were shit. <laughs> sure they were. Now how are they? He said they were fucking shit.